See, I happen to think that we don't have any idea what music is. Um, there was a time when in the music appreciation text, the first thing would be, what is music? And the next thing would be the answer to the question, you know, uh, organized sound or something like that. I don't think we know what it is. And um, there's something that happens when I have an imagination of something and I put it on a piece of paper and it goes to a performer and when the performer performs the air vibrates and we all seem to have sometimes similar reactions to what we're hearing. What, are, what is it? It, it? There's some some part of the brain, I don't know, I mean this is something that's just, ha the surface has not been scratched on what music is. Um, and I think one of the things that's it's very neglected in the academic world uh, is the body. Um, that's not neglected if you're a player. You, it's in your gut, it's in your arms, it's in your feet, it's in your legs, you want to dance, you want to play, you want to put all the the kinesthetic stuff into your music. Um, and I think that's, you know, people talk about this technique or that technique. Um, this to me is, is uninteresting, except as a very small part of the story. Um, and anything that neglects the, the any discussion of music uh, theory, really, that neglects the human body and the effect of music on the human body and the need for the, the, um, a composer's music to come out of the body and the soul as well as the mind of the composer. Um, these, these are very, this, this to me is why at my age I still feel like a kid in a candy shop that I get to do this. And, and it, I make my living doing this. I mean, it's like, I, it's such a miracle in a way. I mean, I'm still kind of in awe of it. It took me a long time to admit this, but I was married to the violinist Joseph Zwillick, um, for whom I wrote the Sonata and Free Movements. And um, he died suddenly um, as I was working on the Chamber Symphony. And I was pretty much unable to do anything for a number of weeks. And when I went back to it, I was such a different person, I had to start all over. Um, and I think that in the course of that, I found how deep music was inside of me and what it meant to me. Um, one of my good friends came with me to Boston for the premiere. And when they got to the end of the piece, she turned to me and she said, I hear acceptance in your music and I haven't heard a peep out of you that accepted any of this. And she was absolutely right. I mean, my music was ahead of me in terms of my psyche. Um, and I do think it made me um, appreciate more the values that, that I was talking about earlier, you know, the, the soulful values, the, the kinesthetic values of, of music.
mean, we're all a little bit crazy to do this, you know. I mean, this is not a normal thing in the, in the real world. And one of the things that I, I have often said to young composers is success is more difficult than failure. Um, for a young person, you know, like when I won the Pulitzer Prize, I knew it, it didn't mean anything about my value. I, I was happy to have it. It was wonderful. It, it helped my career tremendously, but I didn't take it as a reflection of who I am. When you fail, and all those times you try to get your foot in the door and the door slams so, so tight, you know, breaks your foot, um, all of the things where you fail to, to achieve whatever it is you're looking for, um, if you can pick yourself up and go on, you've become much stronger. So I sometimes say to young composers, I hope you experience failure and learn how tough you are, how strong you really are. Um, I think there have been people who have been hurt by early and continued success, like the first time they encountered a failure. One thinks of Sam Barber, immensely gifted man. Um, but I, I think the whole idea that you're standing on firm ground and you're at a, at a point of precipice at the same time is, is a pretty good description. And if we understand that about ourselves and that we're learning all these things and it's not that you're, you're going to take a course that's going to tell you how to do it, um, but you're going to take this course and that course and this course and somehow or other you're going to put it together. But you know, what I consider success is hearing a wonderful performance of a piece of mine. That to me is the pinnacle of success. You know, I'm not, I'm not denigrating. I mean, winning the Pulitzer Prize is very nice. It's wonderful. But to me, success is getting that kind of feedback, you know, really getting a wonderful performance. That's what really drives me. And that's, that's kind of what I aim for, you know. You can't aim to, certainly to be in a Peanuts cartoon or to win a Pulitzer Prize or to do this or to do that or get this prize or that accolade. Um, but to me, success is in the, in the wonderful performance.